Everybody, man, I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, everybody yesterday on the post said, go ahead and do a version of what took place in the Harvard area. That everybody to want to hear my perspective and my interpretation. So as I was reading the article, I thought about something. I thought about a cool, interesting story that the kids, I think, need to hear and need to listen to. So I got a good message to convey to the youth after telling you guys about what's going on. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my app on Spotify Music. Go stream my music. It's all I ever ask from you guys, man. Thank you guys for your guys' support and thank you guys for tuning in. Now the press conference release, which was breaking news, was San Pedro. Never been to the city. Pretty sure it's a nice city because, you know, once you, once you cross that grapevine and go down to the down south to the Los Angeles area, the IE area, any place past Bakersfield, for that matter, it's beautiful cities. Big, beautiful cities, but it also gang infested with a lot of Serrano gangs. You guys already know that. So in the Harbor area, 12 individuals were arrested. Including one that was already incarcerated. I don't know how you arrest somebody that's arrested and already arrested and has been arrested and, and incarcerated in the first place. But a man was arrested that was already arrested and incarcerated. He also got wrapped up in the operation as well. We all know who that is. The Black Hand. It didn't specifically identify the Mexican Mafia member that was associated in this operation. But 12 individuals were indicted. And we're talking about multi-agencies actually got involved. ATF, FBI, and including the police force in the, in, that, uh, in the harbor area. All since 2020 have been investigating this crime area and these criminal activities and managed to bust these individuals. And linked the individual that was incarcerated, the Mexican Mafia member, to working with the cartels across that border. Now... Obviously, everybody's going to say Trump was right. You know, we got to do something about that border because, because these cartels do have a way of finding their stuff ending up on this side and finding loyal, dedicated members of these organizations willing to fulfill their agenda to fulfill their own agenda. One big hierarchy. So a lot of these foot soldiers, a lot of these Sudanians are going to be working for their big homies and their big homies are working for even bigger homies, even bigger mafiosos. Which tripped me out, right? I heard a story in prison, but I always I'm gonna ask you guys. You guys, are, my subscribers are very well educated and knowledgeable in this area when it comes to Mexican mafia members. Anything about you know the gang politics and the prison history? I'm you know I'm really fascinated with what you guys have up here, what you guys know. I've I've actually learned a lot more from you guys than I've actually learned in prison as well. But there was an individual. They said um, I remember hearing it on the main line. It was from it was through Sudanios talking, and they told me that there was a uh, actual mafia. Well, he was basically saying like, "Hey, bro, the the big homies are big homies. You know, they run the prison system, but the real mafiosos are on the other side of that border. That the big homies are scared of those big homies. That the Mexican that the Mexican cartels, they're the, they're the real bosses." And he then he was pretty much elaborating. He goes, "That's why our Cardinales always try to connect and reach out to them, man, because they have everything. They have access to the drugs. They have access to the guns. They're the ones doing the monopoly money, the big, big money, the multi millions where you know the Mexican mafia wants to be." So when he was telling me that, in my head, I'm like, "I don't know if you're talking down on your people or you're just saying it like how it's supposed to be said, like the truth. In all essence, that's the truth." And as I sit here and think about it, I'm like, okay, these big organizations, you know, these Mexican Mafia members, you have the Nuestra Familia members, are big organizations within the prison system. Some have strong ties to the streets. Some are able to control big portions of the streets. But we're talking about this operation identifying Mexican Mafia members still to this day, 20, 30 years later, working with the Mexican drug cartel. That's a dangerous game to be playing, to be honest with you. You know, everybody knows about the, the, the Mexican Mafia member of the Bat, how he got busted over there in Mexico, how he got busted in a warehouse, how he had uh, operations in Mexico, you know, decapitating and, and just doing a lot of hits for the Mexican Mafia. It says it in Boxer uh, Enriquez's book, how many of their members actually had ties to the 
the, the Tijuana cartel and everybody else down there. They once told me a story saying that there was a there was actually a, a Mexican drug cartel who got busted. I don't know if it was in the States or it was in the Feds, but I want to say it was the States because they said it was actually he was actually in Pelican Bay or Corcoran Shoe, but he was in the shoe that the Mexican Mafia actually opened up the books and made him a Mexican Mafia member since the individual was doing life. He was doing he was gonna do life in the California penal system. He wasn't gonna make it back to Mexico. He wasn't gonna get extradited to Mexico. That this was pretty much his home for the rest of his life. So they actually opened up the books and made him a mafia member. I don't know how true that is, so I thought I'd ask you guys if you got any one of you guys would have um you know inside knowledge or want to share a little bit of knowledge without getting yourselves in trouble. You know, it'd be I'd, it'd be interesting to know. Do you also see the truth? And do you also agree with the fact that a lot like like that Sudanio once told me, these Mexican mafia members, you know, they run big organizations, they run the streets, but the real mafiosos on the other side of that border. Very good question. We're talking about 11 or 12 individuals that got busted in this wipeout operation. Three of them are still on the loose. One of them, I swear, bro, he looked like maybe he could be 12 years old. And they showed his picture. And there was a woman that's a fugitive on the loose too as well. It was very beautiful, should I say. But we all know women from Southern California, just they just born beautiful. They, just be they got busted with 50 pounds of methamphetamine. Now, for anybody that knows about, you know, being on that drug, what that drug can do to a young mind, it already can damage and, ha and be a bad influence on an adult mind. But imagine these young kids out there tweaked out on that broken glass off that, that big old block of ice. The type of terror that a kid can bring to the streets, to his family, to himself. What he's capable of doing on that drug, what that drug enhances in you. You know, I'm pretty sure it's just the tip of the iceberg of them uh, taking this 50 pounds. You know, that 50 pounds, probably, there's probably like 3,000 pounds more out there that are, that are going to be fed to these kids. Oh, but I mean, but it's an effort to make the streets safe. I'm talking about 23,000 fentanyl pills. And those pills are usually cut up, you know, and some, some of these pills that these, these kids are out here taking. Since a lot of rappers, you know, be talking about popping pills, doing this and that. One of these kids is not going to know no better, and they're going to pop that wrong pill, and they're going to suffer from overdose and die, because these guys, these big mafiosos, want to work with these other big mafiosos and bring all this over to the border, to the streets of California, and a lot of these kids are going to buy these drugs to have fun, for recreational activities, to be cool with the homies. But they're not going to take responsibility for some of these kids that are going to be out here ODing off these pills or popping this pill that's cut with a fentanyl pill to enhance the high to get people more addicted to the substance. And then we have a lot of our youth dying while these dudes are in, cell, in, a, in a prison cell bragging to their other carnales like, hey, man, I made about 80000 here. I made about 100000 here. You know, I got this going on. We're going to move this way. We're going to move that way. We're going to uh, infiltrate these streets. Not knowing that they're killing off their own kind slowly and painfully and dangerously. Also, I think they said it was five pounds of powder of fentanyl. And I can honestly tell you like this. Fentanyl was hitting the prison system right before I left. Right before I left and it was dangerous. There was one instant. There was once a situation that I'm always going to remember. And it kind of like, it kind of bugged me because I was strung out at the time when it happened. Somebody brought in some, some, some dope that was potent, that was cut with fentanyl. It looked like a grayish powder. And people were just falling out left and right. Falling out left and right. But we, 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 you weren't hearing a lot of my homies doing it. But you hear a lot of two fivers and IRs. Their homies were just right there foaming at the bed. Foaming on their bed. Foaming out the mouth. Getting called out. Man down, man down to the point they had to put the facility on lockdown to stop it from happening. But it was still happening even on lockdown. And I remember two Sureños. And I remember two ex-Southerners at the time mentioned this. They were like, hey, they, they brought it up while, during a Mac rep meeting when I was out there with my celly. My celly was a Mac rep and they were talking about it. And they were like, hey, bro, did you hear about such and such? Yo, yeah, he OD last night. They brought him back, though. And then somebody mentioned it to him like, bro, it was just a small 50 paper. A small shot of 50 paper almost flatlined him in the celly. You know what those two ex-Southerners said? They were like, damn, bro, where's that sack at, bro? I'm trying to buy some of that. 
I want some of that, bro. That sounds like it's potent. I can handle that. And then me and my son, they were just staring at him like, wow, bro. Like, these, this drug is literally killing your homies. One of them was a homie from his clique. OD. Had to hit him with that canister. I don't know what it's called. I forgot. But had to hit him with that canister to, re- to revive him. And these guys, instead of just saying, hey, man, I want to I check on the homie, see if he's good. Well, I'm glad the homie made it. They're over there on the yard trying to find out who's selling it so they can buy some of that because they want to go home and take that fat shot and just be out. That's the way criminals think sometimes. And every time I bought a 50 paper or a quarter of dope of black, since I was strung out on black, I didn't like white. I didn't like that tweet, 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 tweet. You know, I had to worry and have it, and I was, it it used to weigh heavy on my conscience, and I had to worry whether or not if I'm going to slam that, if I'm going to wake up, or I'm going to snap out of it. But when you're strung out, and your body's hurting, and you want that pain reliever, you're just going to do it. And then they said 23 guns got busted, and when I tell you this, man, I I was seeing Dracos, ARs, you know, the CQCs, a lot of them are ghost guns. You know, 23 guns for a big street operation ain't that much. You know, 23 guns, if you go to Texas, bro, that's a that's a Texas household right there, bro. You know how them people in Texas do it, bro. That's That right there is a normal day. That's not even enough for a household. I don't know why you guys in Texas like guns so much, bro. What is it? Uh, what's going on out there, bro? You guys don't even have to get a CCW or nothing. Why do you guys want so many guns? What are you guys preparing for? A civil war? But overall, my message to the youth. This is what I, something I want to talk about with the kids. When I first got out here, these ghost guns were everywhere. Now I don't really hear about them. I used to hear about ghost guns misfiring. I used to hear about ghost guns that weren't properly made and manufactured where after three or four bullets, the barrel melts and it, it just jams up. But then one of my boys in Sacramento, he's on YouTube. He's facing a big case. He actually got a license, CCW. He, he can actually carry a firearm. But he wasn't buying guns at the store. He was actually manufacturing these ghost guns. Then he started doing music videos. And in his music video, he was displaying his, uh, his, his mechanics, his arsenal. And it got him real popular. And he's not even a gang member. He's just a regular guy that had a great job. Had, had just had a baby. And he wound up getting arrested and, and he started, he's facing heavy charges on it to, to the point he had to take his YouTube down. And they're using all his music, music videos as evidence that he was out there manufacturing a lot more guns than he displayed. And then he had permits for all these guns and he's still facing charges for it. He cannot beat that case. So while he was over there trying to become a popular rapper and, you know, waved a gun in the air... Posted on YouTube, posted on social media, even though they were registered in his name, the ATF, the DEA, they they kicked in his door, and he's about to lose a lot of his life because of these uh, these illegal manufactured weapons. Yeah, they look cool. They look like you, they they make you feel like you're part of a GTA episode. They make you feel like you're bigger than the world. Trust me, I know the feeling. After the third time I got jumped and it lit up my mom's house, yeah, most definitely I was buying some for A50. Using them when I shouldn't have, carrying them when I shouldn't have. But that $850, that $1,000 that you're going to purchase for this gun to look cool, to look tight on the music video, to post on Instagram, it's going to cost you way a lot, a lot more. A lot more. When they come knocking at your door, they come kicking down your door. And you're getting busted for a legal manufactured weapon. All because of what? Some of these kids out here not even living that dangerous life. You know, they scream ops. They scream gang gang. They buy a gun. Telling everybody, all this is for if I ain't trying to get caught slipping. I ain't going to get caught loafing. Bro, you're going to school. You're not really going to get caught loafing. Bro, you got into a one-on-one fight with another Edgar. I'm pretty sure it was over you guys' haircuts. Who had a bigger bowl cut. You know, some of these kids are not that serious. I mean, there's quite a lot of people that still gangbang tough out in the streets that, that rock these polys and, you know, they gangbang. But some of these kids just buy them to buy them just to be cool. And you got a lot of other dudes that 
Ain't got no money, don't have no money for their kids, don't have no money for this, ain't got no gas money, but they sure in the hell walking around with a poly. They got a ghost gun. On social media, you don't see his face, but you see him pointing his P-80 at his black Air Force Ones, high tops, talking about what's the move. The boy, the move is that indictment that's on the way, bro. That criminal case that you're going to be facing, that's the move. So kids, you guys don't want to get these guns, man. They're illegal. I do encourage a lot of the youth that are going to go on the right path of righteousness. You know, you're going to have to protect your family and protect yourself from these streets that are still gang infested. So go about it the right way. Get your CCW. Go purchase it at a legal gun store. None of this stuff that you see off the streets because half of these dudes are just trying to make a profit, trying to earn a living, trying to scam you, trying to get over on you. And most definitely don't get it from another gang member. You don't know what's that, what that gun was used for. What it was, what it, where it came from. And you're going to end up with a pistol trying to wave it at a music video, looking cool at a social media post, not knowing that two gang members prior already used it in drive-bys or actually used it actually in a, in a 187. And then when you get busted of it, then when you get busted for it, you get tied to that. You go down for that. So let's try not to be careless and make those kind of mistakes. But most importantly, you have no business buying them off the streets in the first place. Go about it the right way if that's your intent, if that's your intentions, if that's your interest. But do it for a legitimate reason too, to protect your household, to protect your family. Exercise your Second Amendment right when you get old enough. But do it for a right reason. Instead of doing it for a social media post, for likes and views. Because my boy did it for YouTube to blow up on YouTube and get his music videos up there to look like the hardest criminal coming out of the streets of Sacramento. And now he's, in, now he's booked. Now he's in jail and he just had a baby so he don't get to hold his kid like that. And he doesn't know how this court, this court case is going to end up, how much charges he's going to be facing for manufacturing illegal weapons on the streets. It didn't matter that he actually went about it the right way. It's the fact that he was on social media acting like a gang member when he wasn't a gang member. And that's my boy. So that's the positive message that I want to uh, leave the youth and tell my boys about and tell my audience about, along with, you know, what, what took place with this operation. We already know this is one of many more to come. Well, trip out on this, right? You guys hear about those, 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 uh, those houses down there in Los Angeles called Casitas that are actually... Ran by Mexican mafia members, their gambling shacks. See, I heard about it. I heard about it back in the day. The avenues used to do it, but I didn't know it was still ongoing. But if these are illegal gambling shacks that are profiting on the streets, making money for the Mexican mafia in jail. That's a trip, right? New York Post it stipulates it stipulates this. It says it's hidden in plain sight. You don't know that it's there till you know it's there. These casitas can bring in tens of thousands of dollars per week as people flock to the gambling playgrounds to operate electronic machines. He heard some of the gang members running the gambling operations were pulling in 80000 a week, though that number has fallen. These gambling houses are also called NETS, short for Internet Cafes in the early 2000s, or Tap Taps, or Slap Houses. Then it says, all these places... Someone in the Mexican Mafia has always had their hand involved in it. And the LA Times published that. It says the roughly 140 person Mexican Mafia is a prison mob syndicate that oversees street gangs in Southern California. Many of the members are incarcerated, yet benefit from the prof profits of these illegal casinos. They are given part of the profits for allowing the gambling houses to operate in their territories of Los Angeles. Man, I'm telling you, bro, these guys will get their hands involved in anything. I wonder how it's going to work if, the, bar, if the, the economy shuts down and the barter system comes back into effect. But I can't, we can't send money, but you want me to send you a couple of ducks, a couple of eggs, a couple of Easter baskets? You know, want, want some butter? I wonder how that's going to work, man, if the economy was the fall and we went to the barter system. What's the, mess, my, what, what's the Mexican mafia really going to do then, homie? What's the really, really, really going to do then, bro? Am I, am I supposed to trade my livelihood for some soups and mail you some soups? Just thought I'd leave it on that note. So with that being said, I hope the, my message to the youth was important and was necessary. And I hope that, you know, they grasp the understanding of why it's important not to buy these guns off these streets, these illegal guns off these streets. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.